I made a big boo-boo. <laughs> I made a big problem. Hey guys and welcome back to my channel where today we are going to decorate these lovely tanks for Maui and Minnie, two of my leopard geckos. Now if you missed it in my previous video, I announced that we finally have kits with custom reptile habitats, which I will link below along with all the items I use in this video. And if you also own a leopard gecko and you're thinking of upgrading or even buying one of the kits, then let's boop that like button and get this video out there. Without further ado though, let's get on with decorating the kits. So first off, I start with a drainage layer. Now, a lot of people don't include these in arid setups, fair enough, however I still do. I figured if I ever go fully bioactive with my tanks, it will help with airflow around the plant roots. Now granted, this is quite a thin layer of clay balls in Maui's tank. I think I only used one bag, I think it's a 10 litre bag. But I am still hoping it will help out just a little bit. Now I also use the Lucky Reptile Hydro Fleece as a substrate barrier. I tend to use this in all my builds just because it works and it's kind of inexpensive, but I did end up using something different in Mini's tank, which you'll see later on in this video. Next up, substrate. So I'm of course going to be using Earthmix Arid, but unfortunately this isn't available in America, so if you buy one of our kits, you'll receive a bag of Terra Sahara by the Bio Dude. Now to do some decorating. So currently the kit we have is available with an 18 inch tall tank. I think we're also going to include a 24 inch tall tank like Maui's here. Um, but if you do have the 24 inch tall tank, you may know that we need to build up this area in the corner. So um, Maui is exposed to the correct UV index and can get warm. Um, so we have to build this up quite a bit. So what I ended up doing is using the large fake rock that I used in Diego's tank to help build this area up. And I also use a lot of slate. I'm often asked where I get my slate from, so I just buy them in massive chunks from my local garden centre as they're usually on offer for like two for nine pounds, like pounds in currency, not pounds in weight, because a lot of reptile shops, sometimes the prices are done on weight. But yeah, garden centres, check them out. If you can get some slate, it can work really well. What you need to do though is break it into smaller pieces. So we tend to do that um, and then hose it down to get off the sand and dirt and we're ready to go. In the end, I didn't actually use very much of this, I must admit. Um, so I probably could have gotten away with only buying one or two pieces of slate. I actually bought four. Uh, but you know, it's good to have options and we will use the rest of this slate around our pond. As well as slate, I used various other fake rocks, which come with a kit, and cork. Uh, now, one thing I will say about this kit that might stand out to you is it is quite expensive, but what I will say, what separates it from like your basic starter kit is it's kind of an investment. Leopard geckos live a long time, and if you start off on a good foot, like Maui, he's turned a year old and he's getting one of these tanks, this should last him years. Now, if you go and buy a starter kit for 150 200 dollars it's like a 10 gallon kit with half the equipment you can't even use um and then you have to replace that and then you get a bigger tank and then you kind of want a 3d background and all of this you know it soon adds up over the years so with this one i see it as once you've got it and you've got it set up you're not going to need to replace very much on it Anyway, on to some plants. So I am putting up some carex grass and I'm actually using Earth Mix for this. I got a five litre grab bag as I knew I won't need a lot, but I do find this a tad easier to water than Earth Mix Arid. Earth Mix Arid is very similar to cactus or succulent soil. Obviously it's not the same, so don't be putting your leopard gecko on cactus or succulent soil. But what I mean is when you water it, if you water it from the top, the water kind of runs off. And it'll still do it here a little bit as well. But normally with cactus and succulents, you water from the bottom. And it's difficult to do that when the, your plant is literally planted in your tank. So I chose to use Earth Mix with these. And I've chose to put them in pots. Both of these make it easier to water. And, you know, technically I guess my tank is naturalistic rather than bioactive. And also, you know, there's not loads of plants, so not loads of different plants. I could very well do a video here where I set this up and it looks amazing because I've only just potted in the plants. 
And you might not know that a few weeks down the line, half of them are dead. You know what I mean? So I want to be practical, realistic with you guys. Um, and I'm kind of testing my ability to grow plants in a tank. So I'm starting off with the carrots grass. If they do well, if they continue to grow, then maybe I'll add a succulent. So this is really our foundation and I want to grow on it. Anyway, I then took the fake rocks uh, that come with the kit and one of them I actually cut an entrance hole in and this cut with scissors, like some of them are tougher than others but this worked really well, so now it can be a hide. To finish things off, I popped in a leaf litter. Now, I don't currently have a cleanup crew in here and I'd say if you were going bioactive, you would definitely allow the plants to settle in, allow the cleanup crew to settle in before you move a gecko in. Um, but yeah, the cleanup crew, I'm yet to find an isopod species that actually survives in here. Maybe it's just too dry, but if you do have some suggestions, let me know below. I think springtails would probably last in damp areas like underneath the water bowl, but I'm happy enough to go around and clean out the gecko poop. It's not a big deal. And that's Maui's tank done. I'll add electrical equipment and give you a proper tour in a moment. Now for Minnie's tank, so we started off with that drainage layer, but this time I use the Exo Terra mesh. Um, I just got this because I couldn't get my hands on some hydro fleece, and honestly, the quality wasn't too bad. I think I got their mesh years ago when I first did my first Crested Gecko tank, and it was kind of rubbish, but this, this was fairly nice. Now with Minnie's tank, I wanted to keep things a lot more simple. She's going to be 15 this year and she does have that dodgy eye. And though she is still very active, I just wanted to make the tank easier for her to navigate. Um, and I also got her this big piece of cork that I decided would work well as her main hide. I had one carrot's grass left for Minnie's tank, so um, I added that, but I also opted for a fake plant. There are a range of fake plants as part of the decoration kit, so if you don't feel confident enough growing your own plants, you could certainly try that. And these plants do look very realistic in person, and sometimes it can be difficult to grow plants around the heater or the UV, so um, this can work quite well. I had quite a bit of earth mix arid left over, so I did top up the tank. And like in Maui's tank, there are now multiple layers to the tank. If you didn't know, leopard geckos absolutely love to dig and Minnie definitely does. So having this deep substrate will be awesome for her. Also like in Maui's tank, I cut a hole in one of the rocks to create a hide and this will be tucked over on the cold side. And once again, we're going to be adding in a little leaf litter and giving the plant a good water. Now, as I said, I will link all products I use below if they aren't already included in the kit. So the next thing we need to do is install all the equipment. Now, I made a big boo-boo. <laughs> I made a big problem. It's going to be a bit of a pain for me. But basically, in the previous tanks, I've actually drilled a hole in the background so the probe for the thermostat can easily come through. You won't even see it. Did I do that for these two tanks? No, I completely forgot. So I'm gonna have to look at this mesh. It shouldn't be too difficult, but I'm gonna see if I can lower the probe that way. And actually, you know, not everyone's got like a drill handy. So this might actually be something you do if you do have one of these tanks. Right, you're currently in the hood of the tank. Sorry if the audio is a bit weird, but I'm gonna take these wire clippers, just some little jewelry ones I have. And I'm gonna try and make this hole over here a bit wider. Now, as you can see, we have all the equipment in here, other than the thermostat, I need to add that. But what I'm gonna do now is link up all the Jungle Dawn LED bars and the Pro T5s. So in total, we're gonna have eight linked to one plug and one timer. You can actually link up to 10 units. I did do a video for Arcadia on how to link these units, so I will leave that link below. Um, and if you don't follow me on social media, you might not know, but I've actually joined Arcadia's social media team. So make sure you are following them. We're trying to get to 10,000 followers on their Instagram. So once again, I'll leave all of that information below. Okay, so they're now all linked. Now I have to install both thermostats and both heaters. I'm trying to do it quite swiftly so we don't disturb the geckos too much. Okay, so we're gonna leave that to heat up. Obviously, I wanna check everything is perfect before moving in the reptiles. Luckily, none of this is really new tech. They've been using it, so it should work as usual, but I will wait. And what I'm gonna do now is give the tank a good water 
add in all the essentials, then give you a little tour. All the essentials done, so let's sort of work our way round. So this is sort of Maui's warm hide and basking area. Now we do have stacks of slate here and it might look a bit you know, is this going to wobble? But I did test that it doesn't because even though leopard geckos aren't particularly heavy or particularly strong that they would knock these, you just don't want anything to crush them. And if you do want a little bit of extra safety in there to avoid that happening, you can put a blob of sealant between some of the rocks and that just helps them avoid slipping. Then we've got this massive ledge at the back that he can lay on and this cork branch that runs throughout the tank, which I am sure he's going to climb. If you know Maui, you know he loves to climb. Then we have a cold hide that I made out of one of the fake rocks. I actually have one of them as a cold hide in Gizmo's tank and she always uses it as a toilet, so <laughs> that's something. Hopefully Maui doesn't know because it will be a pain with this slate on top, but we'll see how it goes. You never know where you're going to... Ge Gecko's gonna go to the toilet and stuff, so we shall see. Then we have a little calcium dish. Obviously, you need your calcium, and if you didn't know, I design and 3D print things on Etsy. We have a little Etsy shop called The Bearded Shrimp. I'll link it below. But this particular calcium dish that I designed, I have kept it in Minnie's tank for quite a few weeks now, and she's notorious for knocking over calcium dishes or burying them, because she digs all the time, especially this time of year. She has yet to even knock it over or bury it. So I printed out brown ones for each of the tanks uh, because it kind of blends in to everything else. Uh, we also have a water dish that comes with the kit as well. But yes, this is Maui's tank. As I said when I was building Minnie's tank, I have kept things much simpler just because you know, one, we've got this amazing 3D background that does take up a bit of space. You know, the space we're using is a lot smaller, but there's lots of climbing opportunity here. Um, and also, Minnie is older. She does have that dodgy eye. So, though I do find her exploring still, she's a little clumsy. <laughs> Bless her. And so I want to keep things simple. I might add something here because it feels quite empty. But like with Maui, you know, I'm going to wait to see what they use, what they're using the most in the tank, what they don't use, and what I could add once they've moved in. Because everything, we've got the basics, we've got the basics going on, got the little calcium dish, got this. I don't know what these are. I think they're a type of seed pod. I picked them up in the local reptile shop. They look cool. Um, and obviously the water dish there. So it's a lot later in the day, the lights have gone off. What I'm just doing is taking some old dirt from Minnie's tank and sprinkling it about. So hopefully some of her smell will be in here. But now I'm gonna add her in. Now, when you do add a new gecko in, it's very likely they're gonna run off, hide, not even sleep in the right place. They may even just find a dark space in the cold hide, you know, and just stay there. So it's not gonna be the most exciting footage for today. What I will do and what I usually do when I move geckos into new tanks is film them for the first week because their behavior won't be usual. Not always, sometimes they settle in better. I do find girls settle in a lot quicker than boys. I think that's just because the males like to mark their scent and stuff like that. But um, very normal for them to be kind of wary. So we're gonna just let Minnie sort of explore and settle in. So I've done the same thing with Maui with adding his old dirt. So now to add Maui in. Now, as I said, you know, this tends to be a bit more stressful for the males, but I will be filming the first week so we can sort of see how their behavior develops. <laughs> 